Now, besides the basic proportion and percentages, we can also do cumulative. So cumulative, if we have a set of data, this is probably a term you've heard before, cumulative, uh, like a cumulative exam. Everything up to this point is counted. So your book often goes in descending order. Again, I often prefer to use ascending order. You can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, but so if we have these scores, one, two, and three, and they occur in these frequencies. So the cumulative frequency is how many scores up to this point. So when we're at one, there's only four. When we get to two, we take four plus one, we now have nine of our scores. And when we get to three, we add one more, we now have all 10 of our scores. So you'll notice the last of your cumulative will also equal the sum of F, or your sample size, which we saw earlier was 10. So that value will also equal the sum of all the Fs because you've gotten to the entire set of values. So then if we do cumulative percentages, we say, well, what percentage of scores at each point? So at one, you are at 40% cumulative. When we get to two, we're at 90% cumulative. And when we get to three, we are at 100% cumulative. So 100% of scores are the value three or lower is all that means. Whereas 90% of scores are the value two or lower. So we can do things like this in terms of calculating cumulatives as well from our table. Now, in a table, you can also get other kinds of values. So we can identify the median. We could also identify the mode. So we looked at how to get the average, but we can get statistics like that, which we'll learn more about next week when we talk about measures of central tendency. But those things can all come out of a table pretty easily. If we think about it, for example, um, what value in our table occurs most frequently? And we can see that really easy by looking at the F values. So our mode is the most frequently occurring value. And here we can easily see that that is two. So we can also do the median because if, if you think about the median, it's the midpoint. So if we have 10 scores, we've got to find the midpoint or the median location. And we'll do this more next week, but the midpoint is going to be found at n plus one over two. So here we have 10 for n plus one over two. Our midpoint is 11 over two, 5.5. So we can't find the fifth, the 5.5th score. So what we would do is find the fifth score and the sixth score as we count through the list. Because remember, if we listed all these out, what this would look like is one, 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 four ones, two, 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 five twos, three. So now we're gonna go to the second, third, fourth, fifth, there's the fifth score, there's the sixth score, and we're gonna be in between those. And the way we find the middle of those is average them. They're the same value here, so it's two. So we find that our mode is two, we also just found that our median is two. Because what we did to find the median was found the midpoint or median location And then we found the score that exists at the midpoint, all right, the 50th percentile. And so that value is two here, assuming these data are discrete. If they were continuous, we'd have to do a little bit of a different approach, and we'll talk about that in chapter three. But so this is a way we can get cumulative and some other descriptive statistics from a frequency table. So there's quite a bit that we can do with these kinds of tables.